We're in Clemson, South Carolina, and I am speaking with an unusual duo, a husband and wife team who have the same professional background, Meg Williamson and Joey Williamson. Meg, you are at the Plant Problem Clinic, and basically, how do you get information or get things to deal with? Well, uh, samples come in the mail, come from throughout the state, and I get those, and I look at them, and I try to determine what the problem is. Okay, and then Joey, you're with Clemson's Home and Garden Information Center, which we talk about all the time on the show, and how do you go about your diagnostic work? Well, when we get callers or emails, we have to ask a lot of questions. It's like playing 20 questions that children play to identify something, and we have to solve the problem. We have to ask questions to get them to tell us what the problem is so we can tell them what to do. You don't have a physical specimen in front of you. No, so we have to do this over the phone primarily, but at the end, if we can't get help, you know, if we can't figure it out, we'll ask them to send some photographs if they can. Give me an idea. I bet you've got kind of a, a checklist that you go through. How do you start off these conversations? Well, a lot of times things are cultural or environmental. The problems are on plants, so it's usually not diseases or insects first. It's usually something they've done. So we ask questions about, such as, how did they plant? When did they plant this plant? Or when did they install this lawn? What did they do? How did they fertilize? Did they do a soil test to know how to fertilize it and lime it? And that's very important. Uh, we ask them how they irrigate. You know, how frequently, how much, because that's very important to make sure you really wet the root systems of plants. Um, we ask for uh, whether plants have been mulched, like trees and shrubs. We ask about the siting of the plants. It's really important to have the right amount of light for each kind of plant. Some plants like centipede grass wouldn't do well in shade. It'd, it'd fizzle out, it'd slowly go away. But other plants like dogwoods perhaps wouldn't be able to tolerate full sun. So the amount of light is very important for the health of a plant. So Joey, it sounds like you find that a lot of times it's a kind of a lack of knowledge that results in a cultural practice that's detrimental to the plant. Sure is. The initial step of planting correctly is, is super important and um, then how they take care of it, it's just, it's just so important for controlling diseases and insects to make the plants as healthy as they can be. And then as you said too, a lot of times people just see something pretty but a dogwood tree really doesn't want to be in full sun. That's right, that's right. Uh, once we've, we've ascertained that they've grown the plants correctly, we move on to other questions. And the next thing, because of the um, commonality of this, we see a lot of herbicide damage on plants. So lawns are often treated with herbicides, and these are broadleaf plant killers. Um, even though the grass isn't a broadleaf plant, if they apply it at the wrong time of the year or when it's too hot or use the wrong thing or mix it too strong because they didn't read the label, which is really important, they could hurt the lawn or they could hurt nearby trees and shrubs. And we're seeing a lot of that where lawns were treated and trees out in the middle of the lawn were succumbing to herbicide injury. So that's, that's imperative to make sure that weed killers are used correctly. Has the um, ease of taking photographs with the phone helped you some? Do you sometimes send people out there and say, would you mind walking out there and take a picture? Please? Oh, they do. They'll have either a portable phone or a cell phone and I'll get them to send me pictures. It's best if it comes from their computer where I can get a JPEG picture where I can blow it up to see better the detail, but they'll often send them from their phones. Now, if it's not herbicide damage and it's not their culture that they do, then we start looking at for those particular plants, whether that species of grass or that kind of plant, what kind of insects or diseases does it get? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So we get them to go out and look Look at the foliage. Was some eaten away? Does it have leaf spots or a blight? Or in the lawn, are there patches of dead grass? What do they look like? How big are they? So we get them to tell us the symptoms of what they see so we can tell them you know, what the answer is. Usually I think we get it right, but sometimes we don't. And if we can't, then that's when I get them to do soil testing and send samples to the plant problem clinic for an accurate diagnosis. Okay, now, and before we move on to Meg, you do some other things there that certainly have been helpful to me because your fact sheets and your hot topics um, are two things that we refer to. The fact sheet is just, you've done a great deal of research. Tell us how you put those together. How we put them together? Well, we usually go by what types of calls we get in. Uh, for example, lately, we've gotten so many calls on citrus problems because so many people in the state would like to grow lemons and limes and oranges and grapefruits that I recently put together a new fact sheet that will go on the website soon on citrus insect pests, pests and related um, uh, pests like mites because mites can be a problem too. So we do have an in-house review system where we go over uh, the fact sheets to make sure they're well-written and very accurately um, conveying the information. 
So um, we put out several fact sheets a month between me and the staff. So it conveys a lot of information. And we have a lot of fact sheets. There are hundreds of fact sheets about plants, how to grow them, about insects, diseases, and weed control. So it's worth it to look at our website. Well, it certainly is a valuable resource to all the horticulture agents in the state. We just use you every single day. And then, Meg, you've got a different system here. Diana is the person whom I often speak to if I call yes, up here. right. And Diana is she Lowe. kind of the person who begins the process for you all? Yes, Diana is our lab coordinator. And she uh, receives the samples. They come in every evening. And they're actually brought inside. So they don't sit out in the hot sun or the cold during the winter. And then she opens up all the boxes and, and labels the plants with their number. And, uh, and then she logs all of that into a computer system. And then after she does that, um, she brings the samples out to me. Um, and then I take a look at them. Um, we, also, we receive insect identifications and weed identifications mm -hmm. as well. And we have an entomologist that works with us here who does the insect identifications. And then we have a botanist over on campus, Dixie Damrell, who helps us with the weed identifications and other plant identifications. But if you get a plant that's having a problem, um, you're going to start a process to try to figure out what it is. So t talk us through some of those. Yeah, OK. Yeah, well, I, I get the sample. And unlike Joey, I don't get, I can't talk to the person. So we have a. Uh, submission form that we ask that they fill out as completely as they can to let us know uh, what kind of cultural things that they have done to this plant. You know, all the all the questions that he's asked, we try to cover. We can't get as much detail because we're not, you know, asked, talking to the person. Um, but we take that information, and I take the sample, and I'll look at it um, and see what kinds of things I can see just by the naked eye. And then I'll try to just get closer and closer. I'll look on a little magnif magnification at my desk. And then I'll take it to a microscope, a dissecting microscope, and then I can take it to the even closer with a compound microscope and see what kind of fungal structures might be there. And can you recognize those fungal structures, or do you sometimes have to grow them out? What's the yes. extent that it goes to? Yes. Uh, if the fungal structures are there, I can, I can recognize them. And a lot of times that makes for a very easy diagnosis. I see the symptoms, I see the, the pathogen, and, and I'm done. Um, with other samples, I can't necessarily see them, like with your root rots and things like that. So a lot of times we will put uh, plant parts on selective media, other kinds of um, auger media, and grow them in an incubator under lights or not, in various temperatures, um, just to have the best growth for that. So these are definitive for. results. That's right. That's right. And mm -hmm. then when you have that, you can then also, when you respond to the submitter, mm -hmm. and we get copies that we, the agents who've sent them, sent them to you for the client, um, you give them suggestions of how to control this, including cultural and, if necessary, um, um, chemical. That's correct. Yeah, we, I always want to include cultural, because as Joey was saying, it's, it's very important to the health of the plant to have good culture. And if you don't have good culture, it makes it more advantageous to the pathogens to jump in because the, the plant is, is, its defenses are down, so to speak. If people want to submit things to you, they bring them first to their local extension office. Is that correct? Usually, yes. They'll bring their local extension office, and if the extension agent is there, um, then they can look at it. And a lot of times, the extension agent knows what the problem is and can tell them what, what the problem is and what to do. And they play 20 questions like Joey and ask them all the questions, and they, they figure it out. But if they can't figure it out or they're not there at the time that the client comes in, then a lot of times it's suggested that they send the samples to us. And so then we get them. Um, and Joy, people don't have to go through their extension agents to get to you. That is a direct line. And what's the best way to reach y'all and also to take advantage of the wealth of fact sheets that you have? Well, our website is easily reached um, if they simply went to Google or Bing or whatever search engine they use and type in the word Clemson, skip a space and write the letters H G I C and hit enter. The first thing that comes up is going to be our website. So instead of typing the long web address, that's a shortcut. Um, then when you're on the front page of the website, you can see all the different fact sheets that will exist. There's some keys that you go down through to select for what kind of, what kind of plants you want to look at or what kind of disease or what kind of insect problem you want to see. So that's easy to find. We're easy to reach 8 to 4.30 Monday through Friday at our toll-free phone number. It's 1-888-656-9988. So there's several of us there to answer the phones every day. Well, 
as someone who's out in the offices and doesn't have the intellectual knowledge and background of you two, I want to tell you that I speak for all the ages in that we feel like we have an invaluable resource in you two, and we thank you for all that you do to try to help us serve our clients out throughout the state. Thanks. That's why we're here. <laughs> we enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs>